Hey everyone, I just want to give you a quick overview of translating, dilating quadratic functions. This is a lot like what we did with linear functions, so if you can reference back to that or remember that, this will uh, hopefully look familiar. Uh, first of all, I want to show you that uh, when you move the function right, h units, first of all notice h is positive, but then that we put a minus in front of the h, that's to make up for the fact that when you add or subtract right next to the x, Next, uh, on the input, it does the opposite of what you would expect. So we put minus h there, that way when we increase h, the function goes to the right, and it's exactly right uh, that same amount. The original is the dotted function, and so our new function is the line. I only graphed the first one, the other ones you'll be graphing. So uh, notice they all go to the right there, and that is the equation for moving a function to the right. If we want to move function to the left, here is our equation, x plus h this time, and notice again that's on the input, so that's right next to the x, even inside the square, okay? Um, and what that does, that moves it left. You can plot the points, notice I just started the dotted line is x squared, so 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 2, 4, those are each are a number and they're perfect squares, so you can move it left three by adding, if h was three, plus three there, and you'd get those five points, connect them, and we moved it to the left, h units. Um, right here, if we wanna move a function up, then what we need to do is we need to add it to the outside of the function, and that is what it looks like on the graph and in the algebra, where this time k is how much we're moving it up by, and uh, Yep, notice each point moves up by the same amount. Um, and I want you to try the last one on your own. Okay, the difference between dilating is stretching and shrinking in this case. Um, we're only gonna multiply by the outside here, so it's always gonna be vertical. And what you'll notice is that when we graph this, first of all, zero stays at zero. One comma one moves up. Let's say we multiplied it by two, it would move up to one comma two. Negative one comma one would move up to negative one comma two. And each point gets doubled so that when we graph it, it looks like that. It looks stretched because of how I kept drawing the parabola up, but if you were to cut off this right there on your screen, and if you're using Desmos or graphing calculator to follow along, then it will look like you're really shrinking it horizontally. and that process looks very much the same as stretching it vertically. Um, I need to make some edits. Those hopefully are fixed on your sheet. And so on the left, a is greater than 1. On the right side, to shrink it, a is between 0 and 1. So it's a small uh, a fraction or a small number that we're multiplying by, and that is equivalent to dividing. And so therefore, it gets shrunk vertically, which again is going to look a lot like stretching it horizontally. Go ahead and graph this one. You can either use a graphing calculator or a Desmos, and I encourage you to get that because you'll need that for the next exercise as well. On this side, I want you, on this side of your paper, I want you to put that into Desmos and uh, type in A, H, and K, just like that. Make them sliders, and I want you to experiment with it. Okay, we do call this vertex form of a quadratic because h comma k is always the vertex. And notice very carefully that uh, the subtraction right on the inside and the addition on the outside compensates for the fact that when you're next to the x value, it does the opposite of what you would expect. And so that graph, you notice the vertex is always what is always h comma k. What I want you to do now is I want you to try to play with the sliders and make sure this first thing I filled in the first blank for you, make sure that if you increase h, the parabola is translated right h units. If you want to reset it to uh, f of x equals x squared each time, make sure h and k are both 0, so 0 comma 0 is the vertex of x squared, and a is 1. And if you start from that as a basis, then you can fill out all the rest of these right here. On the back here, we want to look at reflecting. Now, uh, reflecting the parabola over the x-axis is like multiplying by a negative. In other words, when a is less than zero. So go ahead, since you already have the sliders created, 
leave h and k as zero and move a to negative one or negative something and notice what happens. Go ahead and graph that and you are all done. Thanks for watching.